Corporation, 32-bit x86 microprocessor designed by Cyrix and manufactured by IBM and SGS Thompson. It was originally released in 1996. A simplistic block diagram of the Cyrix 6x86 microarchitecture The 6x86 is superscalar and superpipelined and performs register renaming, speculative execution, out-of-order execution, and data dependency removal. However, it continued to use native x86 execution and ordinary microcode only, like Centaur's Winchip, unlike competitors Intel and AMD which introduced the method of dynamic translation to microoperations with Pentium Pro and K5. The 6x86 is socket compatible with the Intel P54C Pentium, and was offered in 6 performance levels, PR90+, PR120+, PR133+, PR150+, PR166+, and Prairie 200+. These performance levels do not map to the clock speed of the chip itself. With regard to internal caches, it has a 16 kilobyte primary cache and a fully associative 256 byte instruction line cache is included alongside the primary cache, which functions as the primary instruction cache. The 6x86 and 6x86L were not completely compatible with the Intel P5 Pentium instruction set and is not multiprocessor capable. For this reason, the chip identified itself as an 80486 and disabled the CPU at instruction by default. CPU would support could be enabled by first enabling extended CCR registers then setting bit 7 in CCR4. The lack of full P5 Pentium compatibility caused problems with some applications because programmers had begun to use P5 Pentium specific instructions. Some companies released patches for their products to make them function on the 6x86. Compatibility with the Pentium was improved in the 6x86MX, by adding a timestamp counter to support the P5 Pentium's RDTSC instruction. Support for the Pentium Pro's Kuvk instructions were also added. Similarly to AMD with their K5 and early K6 processors, Cyrix used a PR rating to relate their performance to the Intel P5 Pentium. As the 6x86's higher per clock performance relative to a P5 Pentium could be quantified against a higher clock Pentium part. For example, a 133 MHz 6x86 will match or outperform a P5 Pentium at 166 MHz, and as a result Cyrix could market the 133 MHz chip as being a P5 Pentium 166 is equal. However, the PR rating was not an entirely truthful representation of the 6x86's performance. While the 6x86's integer performance was significantly higher than P5 Pentium's, its floating point performance was more mediocre between two and four times the performance of the 486 FPU per clock cycle. The FPU in the 6x86 was largely the same circuitry that was developed for Cyrix's earlier high-performance 8087-80287-80387 compatible coprocessors, which was very fast for its time, the Cyrix FPU was much faster than the 80387. And even the 80486 FPU. However, it was still considerably slower than the new and completely redesigned P5 Pentium and P6 Pentium Pro Pentium 3 FPUs. During the 6x86's development, the majority of applications performed almost entirely integer operations. The designers foresaw that future applications would most likely maintain this instruction focus. So, to optimize the chip's performance for what they believed to be the most likely application of the CPU, the integer execution resources received most of the transistor budget. This would later prove to be a strategic mistake, as the popularity of the P5 Pentium caused many software developers to hand-optimize code and assembly language, to take advantage of the P5 Pentium's tightly pipelined and lower latency FPU. For example, the highly anticipated first-person shooter Quake used highly optimized assembly code designed almost entirely around the P5 Pentium's FPU. As a result, the P5 Pentium significantly outperformed other CPUs in the game. Therefore, despite being very fast clock by clock, the 6x86 and me were forced to compete at the low end of the market as AMD K6 and Intel P6 Pentium 2 were always ahead on clock speed. The 6x86's and me's old generation 486 class floating point unit combined with an integer section that was at best on par with the newer P6 and K6 chips meant that Cyrix could no longer compete in performance. Cyrix 6x86 133 MHz The 6x86 was released by Cyrix in 1996. 
The first generation of 6x86 had heat problems. This was primarily caused by their higher heat output than other x86 CPUs of the day and, as such, computer builders sometimes did not equip them with adequate cooling. The CPUs topped out at around 25W heat output, whereas the P5 Pentium produced around 15W of waste heat at its peak. However, both numbers would be a fraction of the heat generated by many high-performance processors, some years later. Cyrix 6x86 100 MHz sold under IBM label Cyrix 6x86L 133 MHz sold under IBM label. The 6x86L was later released by Cyrix to address heat issues, the L standing for low power. Improved manufacturing technologies permitted usage of a lower V-core. Just like the Pentium MMX, the 6x86L required a split power plane voltage regulator with separate voltages for I.O. and CPU core. IBM 6x86MX PR300 processor Cyrix 6x86MX 198 MHz sold under IBM label view of the socket 7 321 pin connectors of an IBM 6x86MX PR200 CPU. Another release of the 6x86, the 6x86MX, added MMX compatibility along with the EMI instruction set. Improved compatibility with the Pentium and Pentium Pro by adding a timestamp counter and GMUF instructions respectively. And quadrupled the primary cache size to 64 kilobytes. The 256 byte instruction line cache can be turned into a scratch pad cache to provide support for multimedia operations. Later revisions of this chip were renamed ME to better compete with the Pentium 2 processor. Unfortunately, 6x86MX, ME was late to market, and couldn't scale well in clock speed with the manufacturing processes used at the time. Thanks for watching.